Good afternoon from the American University of Georgia. Very pleased to welcome Associate Professor John Cassis. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Education is the pillar of uh, sustainability and ESG is something new uh, in the Middle East, as you know. Would you please tell us, being an American university in the Middle East, mm -hmm. what your programs are? So our programs related to sustainability are really focused on making sure that every student gets access to sustainability education. So we have a general education program in which every student, regardless of major, regardless of program, has to take sustainability components in there before they graduate. They have to do the same for innovation and entrepreneurship, and then the same across a number of areas. We really, as an American institution, we believe in this liberal arts model, where every student gets access to a number of different courses in a number of different areas that aren't just within their major. We think that exposes them to a wide range of attitudes and ideas that might be outside of their particular discipline, um, and it actually makes them better at the disciplines that they decide to study. Yeah, uh, we're seeing a severe shortage of skills, basically, mm -hmm. from uh, in the corporate world when it comes to sustainability. So they are hiring people from the HR or from communications, mm -hmm. bringing them into sustainability or ESG. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you aligning your programs with the workforce, with their professional needs? Yeah, I, I, a great question. I think the, the trouble on the business side is that many businesses are hiring for technical skills mm -hmm. when what they should be hiring is people who know how to learn. And yeah. so what our focus has been at the undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate level is to make sure we're training students who are learning how to learn. And that's why the liberal arts model is so important to us. We want students who are able to be able to boundary span mm -hmm. and not just be within their small, narrow technical areas, but be able to understand English, be able to understand sustainability, to be able to understand innovation and entrepreneurship in ways that are beyond what a normal uh, trained mechanical engineer or architect mm -hmm. might normally know. What are your partnerships in this regard? So we have a number of partnerships with the United Nations um, through the Global Compact, but then we have a number of partnerships with the UAE government um, mm -hmm. through COP28. So our current head of sustainability is seconded there as the head of education uh, mm -hmm. for COP28. It's something we're really proud of. Um, and we try to have as many relationships as we can with community organizations. Okay. Um, from the, an academic uh, perspective, how do you foresee the future of uh, sustainability and ESG education in the MENA region, globally and in the MENA region? So I think globally the focus has been on making sure we have a broad base and we have people who can learn how to learn. Um, so make sure we have students who have a base in it and then can pick up skills along the way as the technology develops, but also to be able to learn from others in other contexts. So it's really important to create uh, young minds that are able to go abroad internationally mm -hmm. and be able to go to other sectors, so mm -hmm. from government to private sector to NGOs, and be able to understand what lessons they can draw from those places. That starts with a broad base of education instead of just very narrowly focused. I think the struggle we've had in the MENA region is there tends to be a focus, especially through parental pressure, that if you're gonna be an engineer, you take all engineering courses. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be an architect, you take architecture yeah. courses, business, business courses. And the problem with that mm -hmm. is that it actually limits the student's ability to change the way their operating systems mentally work to be more expansive and to understand something beyond what their narrow area is. The truth is we can't train students for the jobs that they're gonna graduate into because the jobs will be different. Yeah. So whatever they sign up for their freshman year in that first year, the jobs that they anticipate will be there in four years will be totally different. And so it's important for us to be able to structure programs, and this is what we try to do, to make sure that students are able to pick that up along the way and understand that they're gonna to have to keep learning as they go forward through their careers. Yeah, uh, sustainability is very, and ESG very con is very connected to ethics. Mm -hmm. How are you trying to basically nurture the ethic, uh, the ethics and the culture of ethics in the you know, region? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great point. So every, every student that we have in the business school and in many of our other colleges take mandatory ethics courses. The idea there is not that there's not ethics in any other class. Yes. Instead, it's that we understand that sometimes if the ethics if the ethics coursework is not mandated that the students will miss out on it in other yeah. contexts and that's sometimes a faculty problem right mm -hmm. but oftentimes it's just a pressure issue there's so much material to cover in a given term mm -hmm. that it can be difficult to make sure you incorporate ethics into every every course so what we try to do is ensure that there's those mandatory courses mm -hmm. where students really get exposed to mm -hmm. to ethical knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. um, this also makes us unique in the region so not every not every program in the region has this, and not every university in the region is as focused on ethical learning as we are. But as you said, we really try to incorporate that into sustainability. So for us, it's really the S and ESG. Thank you. Thank you.